I'll just review a couple of these slides because you didn't have your notes when I talked about them. So on this slide, uh, we're just emphasizing that liver is the primary, the primary source of these biotransforming enzymes in the body. Liver is the primary biotransforming organ. It's, it's big, has a large size, and also a high concentration of biotransforming enzymes. There are some in kidneys, some biotransforming in kidneys, some in the lungs, some in all tissues, skin, you can find it everywhere. Low capacity in the skin, intestine, intestine. But the liver is the primary site. And so if all of the toxins go to the liver, or most of the toxins are biotransformed in the liver, they exist in the liver in high concentration. So the liver is vulnerable to the toxic action of the toxins because that's where they go. Even when the, some toxins are biotransformed into more something more toxic. It's called bioactivation. Uh, so a relatively non-toxic substance gets absorbed in the liver, converted to a toxic substance. Then the uh, liver has a lot of toxins. So this divides, this divides these two reactions, phase one and phase two. It shows you their, uh, their individual reactions and how they're, how they're connected. Once again, this is for a drug, but also refers to a toxin. So toxins can go through phase one, phase one reactions, uh, or phase two reactions, or both. Right? Some drugs can be metabolized, or some toxins can be metabolized directly into something which is water soluble, so they're eliminated. Um, this metabolization or this biotransformation from the toxin to the to the metabolite, those are all phase one oxidations, or sorry, phase one reactions, which include oxidations, reduction, hydrolysis, and separation. So sometimes easy, we can just get rid of it, get rid of this toxin with one single enzyme, it's a phase one enzymes. But oftentimes we take the phase one enzymes and then do phase two enzyme reactions. So phase two, phase one again, oxidation, mostly oxidation. Phase two, mostly conjugation. So uh, what we get from phase two are these things called adducts. And the word ADD tells you the meaning of the word. They're added together, they're connected together. So these are stable adducts. And those will be um, a little bit more water soluble, a little bit more polar, generally. And they can be eliminated in the, in the bile, in the stool. Um, also some problems created here, because uh, some of these stable adducts are converted into uh, glucuronides, we'll talk about that. And uh, what happens is the glucuronides are ready to be excreted, but on the way to being excreted, they go back into the bowel and the bacteria in the bowel will actually break up the adduct that, that you just made to get rid of it. So it breaks up the adduct, the bacteria in your bowel will break up the adduct, and then the toxin goes back to the liver. Add another adduct to it, comes back down, it just forms a big cycle, and the toxin will just, um, will not be excreted. And the half-life for that toxin will be very, very long. And it's your own fault. It's the bacteria in your, in your intestines that's doing this. This is again, just to emphasize that the liver, liver is really vulnerable to all these toxins because it's the main source. Uh, liver receives blood directly from the GIT, the gastrointestinal tract, the GIT. Uh, when you're taking the drug or the toxin into the intestinal tract, the, the blood from the intestinal tract goes straight to the, this huge vein, this main portal vein, goes straight to the kidney, sorry, to the liver. So all of the toxins are absorbed, go straight to the, go straight to the liver. 
Those can be metabolized. If they're toxic already, they can be broken down into non-toxic substances. Uh, and then they can, they can find their way into the, the rest of the circulatory system, go to the heart, to the lungs, everywhere else in the tissues. So the problem here is that the blood which leaves the gastrointestinal tract with all the toxins goes to the liver first. This is called the first pass phenomenon. It's the first organ that gets contacted by this toxin. Uh, so even if the toxic chemical, this is toxic, that it's been detoxified here, there's a lot of uh, to perhaps toxic metabolites that are still in high concentration. this a little bit. This is, these, these are the two biotransforming sites. One is in the microsomes of ER. And I said microsomes are just an artifact. Right? There are no microsomes here. They're created by their our extraction method. So really when we're saying they're in the microsomal fractions, which don't exist, uh, we're saying they're associated with the membranes of the ER, specifically the the rough ER. So enzymes are contained in this microsomal fraction or in the soluble fraction of the cytoplasm, which is all this yellow material in the cell itself. So mitochondria have some activity, nuclei, some activity, lysosomes. So phase one enzymes are mostly in the microsomal, the microsomal phase. Phase one enzymes mostly bond to the surface of these, uh, of these lipids. P450 is a lipid uh, membrane-bound protein. And when we're talking about phase one, we're mostly talking about P450. So of course, it's going to be bound to the membranes. Um, however, in these membranes, we also have some phase two stuff going on. So we can find this. The main, the most important phase two enzyme, which is glucuronidation. Uh, we can some, find some of those associated with the membrane. And so this is not a black and white kind of rule. And uh, uh, systolic enzymes are the non-membrane. So they're the free enzymes uh, which are involved in phase two reactions. They're not membrane bound. But some of these redox enzymes can also be found in the cytosol. Redox being P450. some of it in the cytosol. So some of it apparently is not membrane-bound. Most is. Uh, 